Hey Mark, wouldn't it be great if you had your own personal barista? I mean, I guess if you were rich and famous, you could hire one from your local coffee shop. You know, Morgan, I mean, it sure would be, wouldn't it? But for the rest of us, there are fully automatic espresso machines. Call them super automatics, coffee centers, maybe your new best friend. Whatever you want, but what they're all about is the ability to make cafe quality coffee beverages on your countertop. So if you're ready to make the move, stick with us for an in-depth look at what you need to know to make an informed purchase decision. Yeah, these little marvels, they make lattes, cappuccinos, espresso, and some of the most delicious coffee you've ever tasted all at the touch of a button. And they do it all for about one third the cost per cup of single serve machines. So here's the areas we'll take a look at. You can watch from here or use the links to quickly jump to a specific section. So we've got a few machines here, but with more than 60 models available on wholelattelove.com, we want to help you make a choice that fits both your budget and your needs. So stick with us here, and in this video you can learn about the basic features and capabilities, then get to wholelattelove.com. There you can use the Comparomatics, compare machines side by side, you can check out actual customer reviews, and get machine specific videos. The coffee system is made up of the bean hopper, grinder, brew group, and coffee spouts. These machines grind beans fresh for each brewing cycle. Most machines will also have a bypass doser, giving you the option to use pre-ground coffee. Bypass dosers come in handy if you want to make a decaf or other specialty pre-ground coffee without removing the beans loaded in the machine. So let's work our way through the coffee system. Whole bean coffee is loaded into the bean hopper. Things to look for here are the size of the hopper. A larger hopper means filling less often and how well the lid seals. A tighter seal means your beans stay fresh longer. From the hopper, beans are fed to a grinder. Almost all grinders allow you to adjust the fineness of the grind. So pay attention to the number of grind settings. With more settings, you'll have more control as you adjust for the type of coffee and brewing method. Typically, you'll use a finer grind for lighter roasts or espresso and a coarser grind for darker roasts or longer coffees. You'll also want to take a look at the type of grinder a machine uses. It's usually conical burr steel or flat ceramic. There's some debate as to which type is better, but the general thought is flat ceramics transfer less heat during grinding, which preserves flavor and they also run a little quieter. After grinding, coffee is delivered to the brew group. There the coffee is compressed and hot water is forced through that coffee under pressure. There are some things to keep in mind about brew groups. First, know that for the most part, manufacturers use the same brew group in all of their machines. So from their least expensive to most expensive machine, it's usually the same mechanism doing the brewing. Second, some brew groups are removable from machines and some are not. In the unlikely event there is a problem with the brew group, it's going to be a lot easier to replace if it's removable. Maintenance differs as well. If it's removable, you'll take it out and rinse it with tap water once a week or so. If it's not removable, you'll use tablets specified by the manufacturer to run a cleaning cycle periodically. For peace of mind, warranties are typically longer on machines with non-removable brew groups, often as long as three years, compared to one to two years on machines with removable units. Coffee is delivered to your cup via spouts. Traditionally, espresso machines have two spouts, allowing you to brew two cups at the same time. Handy if you're often doing two coffees, but there are machines that just have one spout. Spouts are usually height adjustable with a sliding mechanism. You want to consider what size cup can fit under the spouts. And there are machines that can accommodate tall travel mugs either by sliding the spouts or by removing a spout adapter for extra clearance. On some machines, you'll find a flow control dial near the spouts. It allows you to adjust the flow rate of the water through the coffee from slower for espresso to faster for longer coffees. It's one more control of the extraction process on top of grind setting, coffee dose, and water temperature. So the key things to look at in the coffee system are the bean hopper, the grinder and number of grind settings, the brew group, and the spouts and the size of the cup that you can fit underneath of those spouts. The three major things to look at with milk systems are how is the milk supplied to the machine, what kind of control do you have over texturizing your milk, and also how is the milk delivered to your cup. 
So milk can be handled in many different ways from manual steaming in a pitcher to completely automatically into your cup without user intervention. A term used often when talking about those machines is one touch. Generally, a machine is considered one touch if it can make a milk-based drink like a latte or a cappuccino with the press of a single button without having to move your cup. For that to happen, milk and coffee spouts must be close enough together to hit a cup without moving it. If you are looking for one touch functionality without moving your cup, you do have to be a little careful. There are a few machines that are referred to as one touch that do require you to move your cup in between delivering milk and coffee. Now, machines can be supplied with milk in different ways. The most simple would be completely manual, using a frothing pitcher on a machine with a steam wand only. On these, the user does all the work. There are two kinds of steam wands, manual and auto frothing wands. Manual wands do require some practice to develop the skill of texturing or stretching the milk. But most manual machines will have some type of auto frothing wand, which automatically injects air in the milk, making it easier to create froth. Auto frothing wands go by names like Panarello and Turbo Froth, depending on the manufacturer. So a major consideration is how you want to work with milk. Do you want the machine to do it all for you, or do you want to do it yourself? If you do do it yourself, do you want the assistance of an auto frothing wand, the ability to froth manually for fine control of the density of the froth, or the ability to do both? For instance, nearly all gaja machines can use an accessory called the Latte Art Panarello Wand. These can auto froth, but remove the outer sleeve, and it turns into a manual wand, allowing you to texture milk capable of use in pouring latte art. Another way of creating froth is with a device called a cappuccino torre. These devices attach to a steam wand and typically have a tube which picks up milk and then deposits a froth into your cup. Again, these devices may go by other names depending on the manufacturer. Something to look for in these devices is the ability to change the character of the froth they create. Some produce just one kind of froth and others have a pin or other method of varying the amount of air incorporated into the milk. As we move into higher end machines, including one touch models, we find a couple of different ways of supplying milk. Some use a pickup tube, which is placed in a container of milk or connected to an external container, which include vacuum insulated carafes and on up to refrigerated countertop units. Another handy way of supplying milk are carafes, which attach directly to a machine. You can keep it in the fridge, ready to go. Pull it out when you make a drink and then return it to the fridge when done. On auto frothing machines, you will want to know if the type of milk froth is adjustable. Some machines create one type of froth and use time delays during which the froth will settle into steamed milk on the bottom and frothed on top. Others have a dial allowing you to vary the density of the froth and some allow you to program steamed or frothed milk in a menu. Cleanliness when working with milk is important, so most machines that do the frothing for you have some way of running steam through the circuit to clean them out. On machines with pickup tubes, you press a button to perform a cleaning. On machines with carafes, where the handle doubles as the milk spout, closing the handle automatically triggers a steam cleaning of the milk circuit. So to recap, things to consider for milk systems are, how is milk frothed? Is it manual or does the machine do some or all of the work for you? How is milk supplied to the machine? Options here range from manual frothing in a pitcher to pickup tubes, insulated carafes, attachable carafes, and even refrigerated countertop units. On machines that do the frothing for you, determine if the type of froth is adjustable and how the machine takes care of cleaning out the milk circuit. Making coffee and working with milk, of course, requires hot water and steam. Most automatic machines today use thermoblock boilers. These are relatively small units that keep a small amount of water hot and rapidly produce more hot water or steam on demand as needed. Most machines have a single boiler. Some machines will have two boilers, one used for hot water and one for steam. The advantage of two boilers is a shorter wait between steaming and brewing. Some machines advertise features like rapid steam technology, which allows the machine to produce steam a little faster than those without it. But the most important thing to know about boilers is, is if you don't take care of them, they are the number one point of failure. Over time, boilers build up internal scale deposits. 
If you follow manufacturer recommended descaling procedures, your machine will give you years of service. But it's like changing the oil in your car. If you neglect maintenance, you will run into problems. So to help you along, a few things. Many machines have alerts to let you know it's time to descale. They do this in various ways. Some machines will come with a water hardness test. You enter this information into the machine and based on that info, use of a water filter and the number of brewing cycles, the machine will alert you to perform maintenance. If you're the type that needs reminders, you may want to consider a machine that does the alerts. Now, we always recommend the use of water filters. You'll get better tasting coffee and increase the time between descalings. In fact, some manufacturers like Jura Capresso say that if you use water filters according to the recommended schedule, you will not need to descale at all. So key points on boilers. Does the machine have one or two boilers? Does it have features like rapid steam? Can the machine use a water filter? And how does the machine alert you when it needs to be descaled? Programming a machine runs from very simple buttons and dials up to full color touchscreen displays with drinks selected by tapping a picture of what you want to make. Most machines will have dedicated drink buttons for a number of different sizes of espresso up to larger cups of coffee. On one-touch machines, you'll usually have dedicated buttons for milk-based drinks as well. So you are able to program specific volumes of coffee and milk and assign those values to a particular dedicated button. In most cases, you can program how much coffee is ground for each brewing cycle, so it's easy to preset a weaker or stronger coffee. Another common feature is the ability to temporarily override the preset strength setting for a single brewing cycle. As you go up in price on machines, you'll have more programmability and finer control over variables like coffee dose and brew temperature. Machines typically use a menu-based system for programming, but most also allow programming drinks by sight. To do that, you press and hold a drink button. When you get the volume you want in your cup, you press again, and then the machine stores the value just like it was set in the menu. Other features available depending on the machine are programming in multiple languages, automatic turn on and turn off, power saving modes, maintenance alerts, drink counters, and more. When talking about size, we're covering two things, the physical size of the machine, as well as capacities like water reservoir, bean hopper, the drip tray, and the drag box. For style, it's part practical, like where are the components located, and how easy they are to access, and part subjective, as in do you like the design and materials used in construction. So you do have to assess where you plan on putting the machine. Will it fit? Will you be able to easily access the water reservoir and bean hopper for refilling and the drip tray and drug box for emptying? Do they remove from the top, side, or front of the machine? Different parts of the machine may remove from the front, the side, or the top. Some machines are on a wheeled turntable Lazy Susan, allowing easy access to side-mounted components. And pay attention to the height of the machine if you plan on placing it on a counter with cabinets above it. You'll want enough clearance to get at things accessed from the top of the machine. And speaking of the top of the machine, some machines have a cup warmer up top and some don't. Of those that do, some are passively heated and others have a dedicated heating element in the warming surface. If you're doing mostly espresso, then starting with a warm cup is important. If you brew into a cold cup, that ounce or two of espresso will cool very quickly and affect the flavor. Of course, if you don't have a cup warmer, you can always heat them up with water from the steam wand, as nearly all machines dispense hot water for doing Americanos, tea, oatmeal, and that sort of thing. So that's our look at the things to consider when choosing a fully automatic espresso machine. If you'd like to take another look at any of the sections, use the links here and you can jump right to it. If you'd like some more help or need more information, don't hesitate to give one of our friendly experts here at Whole Latte Love a call. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up on everything coffee. I'm Mark. And I'm Morgan. Thanks for watching. The number one source for everything coffee is wholelattelove.com.